Hello and welcome to Mainline Baits Carp Fishing TV where it's probably been six, maybe eight weeks since our last upload, a lot longer than what we wanted. We always planned on having a couple of weeks off for Christmas, New Year and then get back out and start shooting some fresh content for you. But the lockdown came in, restrictions on fishing to days only and restrictions on how far you can travel from home, which for me, well, it really reduces my options. So we've been trying to make good use of our time and been editing away on volume three of the carp project that will be coming to you in the spring. But you know what? Cabin fever is starting to creep in. I need to get out on a lake somewhere. And tomorrow, that day has finally come. Well, I've fished in some odd places in my time, but this has to be one of the strangest as we've been given permission to fish a small lake within the Camel Creek theme park on the North Cornish coast and only minutes from my home. The park is closed at this time of year for winter maintenance, so there'll be no visitors or Cornish ice creams today. Bit of a shame that. So it certainly was a surreal feeling to be driving past all the empty rides that would normally be teeming with people and to think we were actually going fishing. But with the sun rising, I'd soon mazed my way down through the park arriving at the lake around about two to three acres in size. I've been told that the lake had held carp, but it was really an unknown stock as the lake isn't a fishery and it's just part of the attractions here at the park. So I was hoping maybe we'd see fish around the single figure mark, maybe doubles, but you never know, there could be some bigger fish lurking in these waters. Coupled with the prospect of actually being outside and on the bank again, I was certainly excited for the day ahead. Time is obviously of the essence on a short day session such as this. So simple yet effective tactics and bait presentations were the order of the day. And so I decided to target the obvious visual features of the lake, positioning two of my rods either end of the Cigar Island out in front of me, leaving my third rod to be cast down to my left and some snag trees at the end of the lake. Well that didn't take too long at all. Just got the three PVA bags out and the last one, the left hand rod of the three, down near some snags and overhanging bushes to my left is away. And this doesn't feel like too bad a fish. Like we say, we're only really expecting singles, doubles, hopefully. But this one is giving a good account of itself in the shallow water and it is heading down towards some snags. So I'm just gonna try and concentrate on what I'm doing and hopefully we'll have one to show you in a minute. We're in this colored water, still not seeing this fish. So I don't know if it's a common or a mirror but it certainly cheered me right up. Good bit of fun. And as I was saying, the cabin fever was really setting in. Oh, seeing it now, it's a comment. Really fighting hard under the rod tip. burst of energy there. Right, he's breaking the surface a little bit. Get the net ready. Here we go. That tail, tail, gulper there. Oh, he just swam under the net. <laughs> Here we go. Two pink toppers hanging out the bottom lip. These fish aren't fished for, so he probably is wondering what the heck is going on. <laughs> he doesn't want to give up what he lacks in size. He certainly doesn't lack in a bit of energy. Come on then, I think you're done. Here we go, over the net, yes! Oh. I 
It's only a little one, but he's brought a big smile to my face. Well happy with that. So there we go, lovely little plump common. He's not gonna break any records, but that's not the point. I was absolutely gagging to get out on the bank, get a bend in the rod, and this little fella has helped me do exactly that. Thank you, buddy. Let's get you back and take a look at the presentation that he fell to. Well, literally, just putting that common back, letting him swim out of the net, and the right hand rod has absolutely belted off. Right, I think we've got this fish back under control. It's just trying to get around the point of the island. Right, he's coming this way. Right, let's get me net ready. It's just in front of me. Oh, I can't believe that. Those takes literally two minutes apart. Right, come on fella, let's get you in. Right, this one looks like a, a pretty mirror, maybe a linear. Yeah, there he comes, another gulp of air. I think he's ready for the net. Let's try and get this one in quickly. If we can, yes. Ha <laughs> Ah, oh, I can't believe that. Two bites, just a few minutes apart. Brilliant. Well, lovely looking linear. And when I seen his mouth and those long barbels, I was gonna say to you that you can see that these fish, it's not been fished for, but when you look at his tail, you can see that he's been fished for, if you like, by a predatory species. There is a stream that the lake runs out into and otters are known to travel that stream I think you could say that this fish, looking at his tail, has had an encounter with one of them otters. But luckily, he's lived to tell the tale and give me a bit of fun on a winter's day. So let's get him back and take a look at that presentation that we were gonna show you after the common. Let's put you back, fella. I think we'll call you Lucky. Okay, here's the presentation that we've been using today. A good old reliable solid PVA bag. And there's a few reasons why I'm using these today. Firstly, it allows me to put a small amount of food, a bite-sized package of attraction out into the lake with the minimal of disturbance, which I thought ahead of the trip would be really important. Because after all, these fish, they're not fish for, so there's no way of knowing how they might react to lines being in the water or those lines being cast out. So another thing that I did was I came to the lake a couple of weeks ago just to put a little bit of bait in some of the likely looking areas around the islands, around some of the snags that are in the margins and the water inlets pushing the coloured water into the lake. The other thing that that allowed me to do was bring the marker rod, do a little bit of plumbing around the lake just to gauge the depth and I sort of learned that most of the lake was pretty clear on the bottom, little gravelly areas here and there and an average depth between three, four, up to sort of five foot in most of the areas that I was plumbing. And the great thing was, is I did all of that a couple of weeks before I was gonna fish. So not scaring the fish, allowed them to settle once that bait and once all that casting was done. And winter is the perfect time for doing those sort of recce type trips. And it certainly worked out today because we've put out the solid bags and they've gone straight away. Now, the mix that I put in a couple of weeks ago, very simple winter mix. I started off with some response pellets in the bucket, a brilliant pellet that will break down, give lots of attraction, a bit of food, but if I did overdo it a little bit, they're breaking down, they're not really gonna trash any of the areas that I was putting them onto. I then followed that up with a little bit of particle, again, another classic mix, 
I put in some hemp and maize, which again would give me some hook bait options with the pieces of maize in there and things like that. We then put in some boilies, some cell boilies, just to have some bigger items in the mix. Again, really just to give us some hook bait options. If I found that I needed to use larger hook baits here today, at least I've already put a few boilies in the lake, letting the fish just get used to those larger items. And then given everything a good coating of ground bait, the essential cell ground bait, and again, that's just to really increase the attraction of that mix, but without actually adding much in the way of feedable food. Like I say, you just don't know how these fish are gonna react. You don't know how much bait you wanna put in. So everything that you're putting in, you really want it to be able to break down and be highly digestible, which is why also added a bit of sweet corn into the mix as well. Again, another classic winter bait, but it's very watery, easy for the fish to digest in colder water temperatures in the winter. On top of that, then give everything a coating with the smart liquid. Again, it's increasing the food signal, increasing the attraction, but it's not really increasing the amount of food that we're leaving on the lake bed. So we did all of that a couple of weeks ago, and it certainly looks to have paid off because the PVA bags have just been going straight away. Now, another reason why I've turned to the PVA bags is it meant that I could actually tie up and prepare my bags yesterday before coming to the lake. We've only got a short day session. I want to be able to get fishing really quickly, make the maximum use of the short amount of time that we got on the bank. So to put my presentation together, started off by just tying up a small braided pop-up rig, about eight, 10 centimeters long, down to a size eight wide gape hook. And then for the hook bait, I've used two toppers in a stack. Nice little pop-up presentation. It's gonna sit above the pellet within the bag nicely, very enticing, but it also ties in with the sweet corn that we put into the lake a couple of weeks ago. I've then combined that hook link and the rig with an inline lead system and a very short section of lead core leader. With all that done, it's then time to put your bags together. So it just take a PVA bag, I like using a small size, and into the bottom of the bag, I just tip a little bit of ground bait. And again, I've thought about the pre-baiting that I've done, and I've used the essential cell ground bait. Just a little bit in the bottom of the bag. I can then just lower my rig into the bag, the hook bait first, obviously, the lead then down onto the top of it, and then I start putting some pellets into the bag. I use the spot and PVA pellets. They're perfect for this type of fishing, as the name suggests. There's several different sizes, from micro size up to about four mil, so they fill all the unwanted air pockets that you might get in the bag. And a little bit like the toppers matching the sweet corn, they're then tying in with the response pellets that we pre-fed a couple of weeks ago. So I start putting some pellets into the bag, a couple of scoops, and then I can just pull my leader up until the lead comes up above that little bit of pellet that I've put in. Just let it tap down on the top of those pellets. Can then gradually just keep topping up the bag until I get roughly around the top of the lead, the tail rubber sort of area, and I've got around about an inch of the bag still empty at the top. I can then grip the top of the bag, tap it down on my hand a good few times just to compact all the pellets, then just give the top of the bag a good twist, hold it tight, and then wrap some PVA tape around the top of the bag a few times, and then just tie that off with a couple of granny knots. All you've got left to do then is trim off the excess PVA at the top of the bag, perhaps wet your fingers just to twist that little bit of PVA around the tail rubber, and then go to the base of your bag, push in the corners, pull the corner tags of the bag out nice and tight, just lick your finger, add a little bit of saliva, and you can just stick the corners of those bags down. And again, it's just making the bag nice and compact, nice and aerodynamic. It makes it a lot easier to cast, and even at short distances, you'll notice that they just fly that little bit straighter. Right, on the bank, there's just one last thing that I've been doing, and that's I've been taking the smart liquid and just inserting that 
into my bag like so. And then I can squeeze and just infuse that bag with the smart liquid. It's PVA friendly, so it's just gonna seal off the hole that I've made putting the nozzle into the bag so it won't split on the cast or anything like that. It's gonna increase the attraction massively and today it's working a treat. So let's get this one out in the lake and see if we can catch another carp. The bright sunshine of the morning was replaced with some light cloud through the afternoon and you'd have to say the conditions were looking that much more carpy. But despite recasting the rods with fresh bags and a fresh boost of attraction, another bite had yet to come. So maybe the carp were more turned on by that sunshine hitting the shallow water. Well you never know, I may have caught the only two carp in the lake. With only an hour or so left of the session, I was still confident that there was another bite to be had. I just needed to be on some fish. So I decided to have a look in the back bay to the right of my rods. And finally, I found what I was looking for, some carp. I noticed a couple of fish, one was certainly a mirror, milling around in some dead and dying lily beds situated in this area of the lake. So there was nothing else for it. I needed to reposition the rods quickly and try and make use of this last part of the day. Luckily, PVA bags are quick and easy to put together and it doesn't take long for you to get a bite-sized presentation back out into the lake and you're fishing again. Do you ever stare at your rods, thinking if I stare hard enough, one of them's bound to go off? Because that was my final tactic as the sun went down and the day drew to a close. Well, unfortunately, that's the end of the session. No more fish to show you, but I've got to say, I've had a thoroughly enjoyable time. And the only bad thing I can say is that the session has just gone all too quick, gone in a flash. So I'll say a massive thank you to the guys here at Camel Creek for allowing us to come down and fish the lake today. I've had a fantastic time. It's felt so good to be next to the lake, on the bank and fishing again. And it's probably the only time that maybe, well on camera anyway, I'll admit that even if I had blanked, I don't think I would have cared. Looking at them rods, having the anticipation of catching a carp was all that I needed today. Just what the doctor ordered. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that notification button so you know when our next video is coming out. If you don't yet subscribe to our channel, please hit that subscription button below. It's really important. And if you'd like to watch more in-session videos and videos about the products I've used today, I'll leave links to those here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.